that's the picture he arrives at at the end of meditation one. Um, and so what that means is that everything that's on the, on the uh, right side here, the objects, the natural, artificial, and other mind objects, all that stuff is at this point, let's just cross them out for now and just completely up for grabs. Um, and I am locked in the prison of my mind. Now, Descartes, in these uh, meditations, there's six meditations, as, as you probably know. Um, this is the position he arrives at at the, at the end of meditation one, at the beginning of meditation two, um, where he finds that what I do know are those things. So my certainty is this certainty of um, self-conscious awareness. In other words, the code. Let the evil deceiver do uh, as much as she wants to uh, mess with my thoughts, meaning mess with the truth, the representational or causal truth of my thoughts. She can never bring it about so as to make it such that I'm, uh, as long as I'm aware of having a thought, I have that thought and I know I'm having it and I know what it's about. All right. Um, now Descartes, in the remainder of the meditations, of course, um, his skepticism is not a, 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 uh, it's a hyperbolic skepticism, it's an over-the-top skepticism. What his really aim is, is to establish the truths of science. So soon enough, he's going to want to say, well, actually, there is an external world, uh, and there are external objects, and they are, by and large, the way uh, we represent them, and we're representing them because, by and large, they're causing us to have the idea. So, so that's what he, that's where he wants to get to. The difficulty is that this uh, uh, hyperbolic skepticism landed him in this prison of the mind that's uh, it's actually pretty uh, tightly locked. Um, so what Descartes needs to do is he needs to establish a bunch of things before he can uh, let the world back in and let the world back in on kind of sciences, modern sciences terms. At the end of the day, he's going to want to say, well, the nature of reality is, is, uh, math is that it's quantifiable and mathematizable. You can put, you know, basically you can put it in a uh, three-dimensional uh, Cartesian coordinate system. Um, and so, therefore, uh, that also is the way our mind works. And so, therefore, there's a, there's a, there's a uh, confluence here, if, if you will. But that confluence is underwritten by a bunch of things. And now we're getting closer to, to, uh, to Kant's, uh, to Kant's uh, role in all of this. Because in order to let the world back in, Descartes has to uh, rely on a bunch of things. And the things that he relies on is, number one, um, a certain conception of substance. Specifically, the first substance that he knows about is this mental substance. I know myself as knowing. The Kogito establishes uh, the mind's awareness of itself. And even though Descartes is quite uh, astute in saying that the ideas that I'm having, my, uh, both the contents and the formal reality of my ideas are, are fleeting. Nevertheless, he doesn't question um, the nature of my mind's eye. He basically says, you know, the cogito is, I, I think, therefore, I know, I figure out that I am. I've established my own being as a thinking thing. And Kant will um, very quickly, uh, actually already Hume, uh, jumps onto this and says basically, no, no um, based on the fleeting nature of my ideas, there's no stable mental substance that I'm finding there. That needs to be either, uh, that's either open to its own skeptical doubt or it needs to be established. 
Hume says it's open to doubt. He thinks of, you know, the human mind is basically a bundle of ideas. Uh, Kant will say, no, no, there is such a thing as a mental substance, um, and I think. Uh, and, and, but but it, we can't just uh, presuppose or assume it. Uh, the other thing that Descartes relies on is a very strong notion of causation or causal principle. Now, this causal principle Descartes uses in Meditation 3 in order to prove the existence of God, and the causal principle in Descartes, uh, you know, very uh, crisp formulation is essentially something doesn't come from nothing. Uh, it is not possible to have an effect uh, or a thing happen, an event occurring, unless it is an effect. Uh, unless there is a preceding cause that somehow brought it about. Uh, so Descartes simply presumes this as something that is known rationally by the light of nature, as he says. It's one of those rational truths, rational metaphysical truths, just like the truth of the mental substance, the thinking thing. So the causal principle is one that is known both clearly and distinctly, and it cannot be denied, um, and it's, it's a necessary metaphysical principle. And then finally, uh, in combination with those two, Descartes then is able to, uh, or takes himself to be able to establish the existence of God. Um, so, substance caused God. Descartes also has a pretty uh, robust uh, conception of freedom. Um, which is another or one of those uh, metaphysical ideas uh, that he that he brings to the table, and uh, with those he's then able to uh, establish um, the existence of a uh, mathematizable, uh, you know, natural world that fits just perfectly the uh, self conception of modern science. In this way, he's going to say, well, look, I've proved the existence of the world, first of all. There is an external world. External world skepticism is wrong. I've proved my own existence. I've proved the existence of God. I've proved, the, you know, um, as part of this mental substance, the um, separability, it's Descartes' dualism of uh, body and mind, and so the immortality of the soul, and we're done. Uh, in six days, just like the good Lord, uh, all our problems are solved. So that's Descartes' conception. What's important for, uh, for us are these, and I'll, I'll, I'll put the notion of freedom down here. We'll talk about that later. These metaphysical notions are the things that Descartes takes more or less for granted. And it's exactly those notions that cause headaches for our philosophers in the early modern period. It's exactly those notions that Kant wants to figure out to what extent are we using them legitimately. Descartes assumed them, uh, Hume trashed them, they do play a role. What's the legitimacy? And those notions, once again, they're, they're metaphysics, metaphysical notion, notions. principles, notions. To what extent can we make legitimate use of these uh, metaphysical principles? That's one way of characterizing uh, Kant's foundational question. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the empiricism of Hume and, and where exactly Kant comes into, into play. Thank you.